Hey, back outside again for evening prayer, April 26th, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. And uh, yeah, it's a little cold <laughs> like it was this morning, but it's still a beautiful day. It's great to be outside again. And the birds are flapping all around me. I hope that's all they do is flap. <laughs> well, tonight we're going to talk about uh, one simple word. That word is mine. And let's begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of day. That truth from John chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. And of course, I always love to read any of uh, the passages that Jesus, where Jesus talks about himself as being the good shepherd. That's what our shepherd is all about. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Oh, that's us. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received is from my Father. Pretty awesome and pretty complete. And, you know, you hear Jesus talking that way and you think, how do the disciples not get it? <laughs> but, well, for one, we're sinful. And, you know, I probably would have been in the same boat as them. And number two, God revealed what he wanted to reveal at the time uh, to the disciples. And number three, they're expecting something so completely different from Jesus that well, he really can't be saying or meaning what he's really saying. It must mean something different, right? But it's so clear here. It's so clear that he plans, intends, is fully there for one reason, to lay down his life for his sheep, because we are his. And he says to us, you are mine. I think of uh, children. I think of when I was a child and I had something that I really cared about. And I, I would say, oh, it's mine. It's mine. And there was a certain selfish possessionism to that. I wanted to make sure that no one else touched it because it completely and absolutely belonged only to me. Now take that and make it perfect as Jesus is perfect. When he says, you are mine and I'm going to make sure that nothing gets to you and nothing takes you away from me. You are absolutely my own, my precious possession. And I will do everything that I have to, to make sure you're mine forever. And that means stepping in between us and the devil and sin and death and making sure that there's nothing that will stand in the way of our being together in his presence for eternity. That's what it means when he says that we are his. And he says, you are mine. What a glorious, glorious place to be in the possession of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray the prayer that he taught us, in fact. And I'll say another closing prayer. We can close with uh, Luther's evening prayer as well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. And Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that we do belong to you because of the price that Jesus paid on the cross. Lord, he, in buying us back, he redeemed us from Satan and placed us firmly in your hands for eternity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we get to hear the words from your mouth. You are mine. 
We pray in the name of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's pray Luther's evening prayer as well. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our final word tonight from Isaiah 43, verse 1. Do this. If you have a moment this evening, read Isaiah 43. I'm going to read the first verse, but it was really hard for me to just pick one verse. I wanted to read the whole chapter, so read the whole thing tonight to see how much God loves you. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a wonderful, restful, peaceful night knowing that you belong to him.